find the gradient field for the following potential function, and then sketch a few level curves for phi and a few vectors for the gradient field. So to begin here, the very first thing that we want to do is find a level curve for phi. So let's keep in mind that phi of xy is a function, so we can set this equal to z. So to find the level curve, we're simply going to let phi of xy equal some real number, some scalar value k, and simplify. So here we go. We have our beautiful function phi of xy is defined as 5x plus 4y. So we can say we have 5x plus 4y is equal to some scalar k. Now we want to keep in mind here that this is restricted such that the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 10 and the absolute value of y is less than or equal to 10. So looking at this level curve, we realize, hey, this is a diagonal line. And this diagonal line is going to have varying y-intercepts, depending on what we let k be. So let's simplify this diagonal, diagonal line a little bit further so it'll be easier when we go to graph. So simplifying, we have 4y is equal to negative x plus k. And dividing both sides by 4, we are left with y is equal to negative 5 fourths x plus k divided by 4. So we've converted the standard form of the line to our slope-intercept form for graphing purposes. And then again, let's keep these absolute value restrictions in mind. So we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 10. So we're calling way back to pre-calc. We know that this is equivalent to saying that x is greater than or equal to negative 10, less than or equal to positive 10. And the same thing for the absolute value of y being less than or equal to 10. This is equivalent to saying that y is greater than or equal to negative 10, less than or equal to positive 10. Beautiful! So we have our level curve here, and we're ready now to find the gradient field. So we are given the potential function phi of xy is defined as 5x plus 4y. So our gradient field, vector f or del phi, Let's keep in mind that del phi is the vectors, or the vector, whose components are the partial derivatives. So we can say that our gradient field is defined as the vector with components 5, 4. Beautiful! So we have everything that we need, and we're ready now to start sketching what this vector field is going to look like. So here we go, giving ourselves plenty of room. Now, one more thing, actually, that we should do before we jump into sketching this is let's find some specific level curves. So to do this, we are going to choose a few different values for our scalar k. Now, remember, k can be any value your little heart desires, but we want to be mindful when we're picking these values that we're choosing easy to sketch values. So for example, let's go ahead and let k equal, say, negative 20. So when I take negative 20 and I plug it into the level curve, we end up with y is equal to negative 5 fourths x, well, minus 20 divided by 4, which leaves us with negative 5. So this is an easy to plot y. We can see that this line has a y-intercept at the ordered pair, 0, negative 5. And this line has an x-intercept at the ordered pair, negative 4, 0. So those are easy to plot points. Let's do another one. Let's let you know, k be 0. So when we let our scalar k equal 0, we are left with the diagonal line y is equal to negative 5 fourths x plus 0 divided by 4, which is 0. Beautiful! So again, a nice easy graph here. We can see that the y-intercept and the x-intercept are both at the origin. 
zero zero. I will do one more for good luck. Let's go ahead here and let's let k be equal to positive 20. So this leaves us with the line y is equal to negative 5 fourths x plus 20 divided by 4 is 5. So this is a beautiful diagonal line with a y-intercept at the ordered pair, 0, 5, and an x-intercept at the ordered pair, 4, 0. So there you have it. These are three level curves for our potential function that are going to be easy to plot. Now, we also want to keep in mind, well, in theory, we can choose any real number our little hearts desire for k. We want to make sure that these diagonal lines have their y-intercepts within the restrictions on x and y. So now that we have these specific level curves and we have our gradient field, let's go ahead and start sketching this graph. So here we go. Now, remember that our first level curve, when k was equal to negative 20, has a y-intercept at the ordered pair negative 5, 0, and it has a x-intercept at the ordered pair negative 4, 0. So drawing a line connecting these two ordered pairs, we can see our level curve. And again, this is the level curve when k is equal to negative 20. Now, our next level curve is when k was equal to 0. And this level curve has a x and y intercept at the origin. So we can draw a line. Again, it has the same slope as our first level curve. So it is a parallel line passing through the ordered pair 0, 0. And so this was the line negative 5 fourths x, and again that was when k was 0. And last but not least, we have the level curve when k is equal to 20. So recall that this level curve has a y-intercept at the ordered pair 5, 0, and a x-intercept at the ordered pair 4, 0. So drawing a diagonal line parallel to the other level curves, passing through these two points, we see our third level curve. Beautiful. So now that we have our level curves, we are ready to sketch the vector field. So what I want you to do is keep in mind the gradient field we found. We know that our gradient field, del phi, is the vector with components 5, 4. So every vector in this gradient field is going to have the same length. Now, when we go to plot these vectors, we want to think about a point, say an arbitrary point x, y, on this level curve. And we can use the components of our gradient field to find the direction these vectors are going to be pointing. So from the x component, we see that it's going to have a positive change of 5 units in the x direction. So we can say del x is equal to 5, and it's going to have a positive change of four units in the y direction. So I'm not trying to scale here, but we get the idea that each vector in this gradient field is going to be pointing out and up. So you can plot as many vectors in this gradient field as your little heart desires. I'm going to start by simply just plotting the vectors at the intercepts. So at the ordered pair, 0, 5, we know that our gradient field is going to move five units to the right and then up four units. So here is our first vector in this field. Beautiful. Let's do the same thing for the ordered pair, four, zero. So again, we know that this is moving five units out to the right and four units up. So right about there. Beautiful. Now at the order pair zero, zero, we are moving five units to the right and four units up. So here's another vector in this field. At the ordered pair, negative four, zero. Again, we know that we are moving five units to the right and four units up. So here's a fourth vector in this field. And last but certainly not least, at the ordered pair zero, negative five, we are moving five units to the right and four units up. So here is one 
additional vector in this gradient field. So there you have it. Here's a few level curves on our potential function, or for our potential function, and a few vectors in the gradient field.